Hi, welcome to Elephant in the Room. These are short adventures in geography designed to make you think. The idea is, wherever you see this red stamp, I want you to stop and think about what we're doing. This time, we're going to talk about humans and resources, and in particular, the relationship between population growth and food supply. We're going to look at the ideas of two very influential thinkers in this area. The first is this guy, Reverend Thomas Malthus, and he was busy writing pamphlets and worrying about too many poor people in the early 1800s. The second is this lady, Esther Bozerup, who worked on agricultural issues for the United Nations during the 20th century. In many ways, their ideas sum up where we are today in our thinking about the environmental, social and economic challenges that we face. But they also show us how our thinking needs to move on to deal with those challenges. So let's start off with Malthus. Um, I think it might be a good idea to make a sketch graph and fill in the details as we go along. So Malthus said, population grows exponentially. People have too many babies who go on to have too many babies themselves, and those babies go on to have even more babies. So population growth is accelerating over time. But food supply doesn't work like that. It might go up arithmetically, but it's not like fields have baby fields who have even more baby fields. So there'll always come a point where there are too many people and not enough food. And at the point where the food runs out, there'll be some sort of Malthusian catastrophe. He called these natural checks. And these inevitable natural checks would limit population growth. They might be positive checks, that's what he called them, like war or famine, or they might be negative checks, like religion or abstinence, that's um, avoiding making babies. So this is how Malthus saw things. But then, about a hundred years later, along comes Bozerup and she says, hang on a minute. People innovate. They find clever ways around their problems. And she uses agricultural revolutions as her example. So she says, all right, people might start off with slash and burn type agriculture, but as population pressures build up, it develops into more sedentary agriculture and soon people begin to understand crop rotation and how to use fertilizers and they try out new types of crops and maybe invent tractors and so on. So pretty soon food supply is accelerating in the same way as uh, population. So this is what Esther Bozerup thought. So these two ideas represent two extremes really, extremes in the way we look at the relationships between humans and resources. We've got Malthus on the one hand saying, oh, we're all doomed. And he means doomed to never enough to go round. And every time there's a little bit extra, people, especially the poor ones, uh, just have more children. And that's the end of that. So this was the world Malthus was describing in the early 1800s. And then we've got Bozerup on the other hand saying, oh, for heaven's sakes, no, we're not doomed. And she comes from the 20th century where they have a much more positive view of our ability to invent our way out of our problems. So it's really a debate about limits, isn't it? We've got Malthus saying that food limits people and that means the inevitable lot for humans is, you know, endless suffering. 
And then we've got Bozerup saying, no, no, no. Necessity is the mother of invention and innovation will always save us. So it's people's imagination that limits food. And the question is, whose side are you on? Well, we're good geographers, so we should always look at the data. So here's the population changing over time. And what we see is a large increase in the population. And maybe it's not too far from an exponential increase in population. So this part of the story looks to be true, at least. So what about food supply? Well, there's a lot going on in food supply, but one thing is the amount of land used for agriculture. And you can see that that has increased maybe exponentially up to the 1950s before slowing down a bit after that. Some of that increase has been in far flung parts of the world. So obviously a global trade in food has been an important factor too. The other factor is agricultural intensification. That's about how productive that agricultural land has been. And you can see that since the 1950s, productivity has increased maybe three or four times what it was before that. So as a result of these things, there's been a large increase in food supply as well. So, so far at least, food supply has kept pace with population growth, even though that population growth has been almost exponential. So this seems like pretty good evidence that Bozerup was on the right track. OK, cry all the Malthusians, but what about the future? Well, the population forecast looked like this. So population growth is slowing down fast. And this is something that Bozerup and Malthus hadn't taken into account in their original ideas. So what's going on here? Well, as societies have developed through all that innovation that Bozerup expected, there's been a large decrease in the birth rate. Women are having fewer and fewer children. In fact, in many countries, birth rates have fallen below two babies per woman, meaning they're not just growing less quickly, their populations are going to start falling. So in a way, it turns out that Malthus had a point after all, although not quite in the way he'd envisaged it. The lower poverty and better education and access to birth control that drive down the birth rate are a sort of abstinence, a sort of negative natural check that's reducing and even reversing population growth. It's as if all that Bozeropian innovation has somehow resulted in a self-limiting condition for humans. So here's a really tricky question for you. Is this what creatures normally do? As they converge on their maximum peak population, their carrying capacity it's sometimes called, do they normally start having less babies? Anyway, putting it all together, we've gone through a phase of exponential population growth and exponential growth in food supply. And this is our Bozeropian phase. And we're about here. But we seem to be entering a more Malthusian phase, maybe without the catastrophe, when population and food supply stabilize. And this brings up a couple of really interesting questions. While the population and food supply might have reached a sort of sustainable plateau in that it's not changing, there's still a question about whether that level is sustainable. 
And then there's this other question. Does this mean that we're going to stop innovating? If we reach some sort of plateau, does that also mean that there's nothing driving change anymore? So there we are. Perhaps the best way to look at the relationship between population growth and food supply is by using a combination of Malthusian and Bozeropian thinking. And maybe that's true for all relationships between humans and resources. It requires both Malthusian and Bozeropian processes acting together to produce these sigmoidal patterns, these S-shaped curves. And managing those S-shaped relationships between humans and resources requires more sophisticated thinking than just adopting one or other point of view. So my final point is just to keep a sharp eye out for these S-shaped curves. They seem to underpin most of what is going on in nature. Once you start looking at things from this point of view, you'll start seeing them all over the place. So leave me a comment about where you spotted a sigmoidal curve like this. See if you can figure out what was going on in the Bozeropian part of that curve and what was going on in the Malthusian part of that curve. Thanks for listening. See you next time.